Let's talk some Michigan football injury news. After missing all of winter workouts and, of course, spring practice, timelines have begun to emerge. Got some credible information on both Diamond Edwards and Blake Corum and when they are going to be back to full speed. We know Michigan can't start practicing officially until August, but there are plenty of 7-on-7 seven seven and workout drills and, of course, conditioning that happen all spring long after the you know, spring uh, practice and into the summer. The rest of the freshman class hits campus on June 1st, and that's when things really get going towards this 2023 season. The Michigan Football Report is sponsored by Rex MD, the number one leader in men's telehealth. Go to rexmd.com slash chat. Have a great offer from RexMD that I'll tell you about here in a few moments. All right, Blake Corum Knee Rehab. Let's take you through what we know, uh, information that's been updated here in the last couple hours leading up to today's Friday afternoon show. He is targeting a June 1st date to be back to full speed, running the football, cutting. He can run right now. He's probably at 95% of his straightaway speed, but as you saw in the Ohio State game, second half against Illinois, when he tried to give it a go, uh, he had absolutely no lateral movement, and that's, of course, why he got the surgery, set out spring ball. Uh, he's ramping up impact training right now, um, you know, doing a lot of box jumps, etc. You've seen him in the workout weight room, pumping up 225, you know, almost 30 times. But the biggest thing is side-to-side -side movement, doing that impact training, his expectations to be back to full speed on June 1st. How about the Don? Diamond Edwards been focusing on intense speed training, right? It's not a lower leg injury. It's a hand injury. We saw him with the big cast throughout the end of the season. That cast is uh, coming off. Or it's coming, you know, it's, uh, he's kind of gone from the small cast to the big cast to the small cast. Should be completely off uh, anything, even just a little slight wrist uh, protector uh, here in the next couple weeks and will be 100% uh, by mid-May, if not sooner. This one's as close as it can get, but they're going to be cautious because we saw with both these guys, they have the, you know, the tendency to re-injure themselves. So that's the latest on Diamond Edwards and Blake Corum, what we know on their injuries. We're going to dive into more Michigan football news and rumors throughout today's show. We're going to start with a little bit of recruiting and then we're going to talk 2023 schedule by game by game score predictions. All 12 games in the schedule. And we're even going to you know, talk about the Big Ten Championship game as well. So with recruiting... Getting, uh, it's been a big time story over the past month. Jaden Davis committing two weeks ago. Just want to refresh everybody what the commit, the, the recruiting class looks like as of now here on April 14th. Jaden Davis, top rated recruit in the composite rankings. He is number 28 overall. Jordan Marshall, kind of reminds me a little Diamond Edwards, JG McCarthy, Mike Hart, uh, Chad Henney. That top 100 running back, five star quarterback combo has proven. Big time for Michigan football in the past. Jacob Bowden, a local kid, Andrew Sprague, and then Hogan Hansen, top 200, one of the top five, six tight ends in this class. He's getting recruited by other schools heavily. Miami kind of popped up there in the last couple weeks. Doesn't seem like that's as interesting to him as some had initially thought. Round out the class, Mason Curtis, uh, tackling machine, Luke Hamilton, the offensive lineman, Ted Hammond, uh, Ben Roebuck out of St. Ed's in Ohio. A couple of his teammates, high school teammates in that same offensive line, have committed to Ohio State recently. Uh, uh, and then you've got a couple defensive players, defensive line, and Zach Ludwig rounding things out at the linebacker position. Major recruiting change starting July 1st. This is news that just come out in the last 15 or so hours. Starting July 1st, recruits no longer are limited by five official visits uh, per you know, the recruiting cycle to pick which school they have. All right? If you're not familiar... Schools, uh, recruits can take whatever they want. They can pay to travel to any school near or far on their own for an unofficial visit. The school cannot contribute financially to that travel or stay or anything like that at all. Five official visits has been the rule forever. That's changing. Now starting July 1st, so two and a half months from now, uh, recruits can take as many official visits as they can have. I think it's going to give an advantage to a school like Michigan. Uh, they can just basically say to any recruit who's not even considering, hey, if we're in your top 10 or if we're in your top 15, come take a visit. It is fully paid for. Even if you're from Florida and you're just only you know, considering SEC schools, come check out what Michigan has to offer. Schools with huge recruiting budgets like Michigan, Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama, et cetera, et cetera. I think it will help them out. So good thing for Michigan. Uh, and that could all get started on July 1st. So it really impacts every recruit out there going forward. If you guys love Michigan football and you want more Michigan football news all off season until August when we do a show every single day and we'll have a weekly or twice weekly live show, make sure you are subscribed to the Michigan Football Report, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. 
All right, next up, it's going to be my game-by-game -game score predictions. Every single game that's on the calendar, on the schedule for this Michigan football program in the 2023 season. So join in. You know, Let me know what you guys think on some of my score predictions. But I didn't want to tell you first about today's sponsor, and that is Rex MD. Guys, feeling nervous or not performing at your best in the bedroom can be a confidence killer. But don't worry, RexMD is here to help. As the most trusted leader in men's telehealth, RexMD makes it easy, discreet, and affordable to get generic and branded Viagra or Cialis online. No embarrassing trips to the doctor or insurance copays required. With RexMD, you can talk to a medical professional, create your own personalized plan, and get products shipped straight to your door within two days. And they don't just have ED medication. They also have sexual health, hair grow, uh, growth, pain relief, and sleep aid medica medications. Plus, you can save up to 90% off your ED treatment with Rex MD. Don't let ED come between you and your relationships, dates, or encounters. Take advantage of the best deal they've ever offered. Save up to 90% and pay only $2 per dosage with our exclusive link. you got to go to rexmd.com slash chat. That's rexmd.com slash chat. You see it in the live chat. You see it in the screen. It's down in the comments and the description of today's video. Rexmd dot com slash chat you get generic and starter packs of viagra and cialis now available for our friends uh here in line our audience that's directmd.com slash chat stay up to 90 percent thank you so much to them for sponsoring today's video Let's take a look at the top 2024 recruiting classes updated as of 6 a.m. this morning. Georgia is the number one class still. Ten uh, commits right now. Ohio State has been on a little bit of a run themselves, right? Michigan's been on a run. They pop up to number two. Ohio State, equally strong run. Uh, still don't have their quarterback yet. Uh, I know they got some. Sorry, they do. They got uh, Air, whatever his name is. Uh, Air Nolan. That's kind of a funny name. Air Nolan. That's his name, right? N O L A N. Uh, so they're number two uh, recruiting class now, slightly above Michigan. The Wolverine State, number three. Then it's LSU, Notre Dame, or Oregon, Tennessee, Penn State, Florida State, and I don't know where. From the top rope, it's Pitt at the number 10 recruiting class in the 2024 uh, composite rankings. And, of course, it's still early, still eight months till signing day. Let me ask you guys this question before we jump into the schedule. Home and home games are scheduled for 2024. So next year, 2024, it's going to be in, in Ann Arbor now. It was supposed to be in Texas originally. They flip-flopped them. Uh, it goes, I think, Texas, Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma, if I recall correctly, or some you know combination of that. I'll have to look it up. Um, should Michigan know? It's actually Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Texas. That's really weird how, they, how it shakes out. Um, should Michigan keep those games with the expansion of the playoff and USC and UCLA joining the Big Ten? Keep or cancel? Let me know what you guys think. Live chat, I see Mitch with a quick K for keep. Let me know what you guys think. Keep or cancel? I'm not sure if they have any option to cancel at least that first game with Texas because that was part of the negotiations with uh, Texas, Oklahoma going to the SEC a year early. Fox uh, really pushed for that game to be on their networks. That's why it's going to be in Michigan Stadium. But let me know what you guys think. Keep or cancel this four-year series starting uh, one year from this September. All right, Michigan football score predictions. It's early. I don't know everything about every single team yet. I don't know uh, how their springs are shaking out. A lot of these schools are still, that Michigan's going to face, are still in spring practice. But this is my best guess based on what they did last year, what Michigan did against a lot of them last year, what Michigan's got coming back, and what those schools have coming back. So I'm guessing I'll be wrong and probably way wrong on quite a few of these. But this is my best guess as we're still just about five months out from the season getting started. Before we do, though, let me know what your score prediction is for Michigan-Ohio State. Uh, no one would have been able to predict the scores the last two years. It's just not possible that Michigan, any, any fan with a uh, head on the shoulders could have said Michigan's going to go in and drop 45 points uh, to Ohio State's 23 in Columbus, okay? No one would have said number two Ohio State was going to come into the big house and Michigan was going to beat them 42-27 to 27 a year ago after, you know, an eight-game losing streak. But let me know what you guys think. Predict your score, Michigan-Ohio State in November. Hit in the live chat or hit it down in the comments. Take a look at the schedule here. I'll just run through the month of September, then I'll give you my score prediction for East uh, for e each East Carolina eight and five last year. UNLV five and seven. Bowling Green six and seven. They made a bowl game at six and six. Lost that game. Rutgers four and eight. Nebraska four and eight as well. They have a new head coach in Matt Rule. My score predictions and some of these I'm just going to blow through because you guys know why. Others I'll spend a little bit of time on. ECU okay eight and five last year. I kept a couple teams close here, but I, I do think it's uh, probably a game that is closer in the first half than we like. Then Michigan pulls away in the second half. I've got the Wolverines win 45 to 14. UNLV 
absolutely a disaster as a program right now. Uh, they went five and seven. They got lucky to win, uh, you know, five games. I believe I got Michigan win this one, sixty-three to nothing. Absolute blowout, much like the Hawaii and the UConn games of last season. Bowling Green, how about the score? Seventy to seven. I've got Michigan blowing Bowling Green out. So 45-14, 63 nothing. Seventy to seven is my score prediction for the three out of conference games. Then you got Rutgers coming to the Big House. Michigan has absolutely destroyed Rutgers under Jim Harbaugh, except for I guess you know they struggled a little bit in twenty twenty and they had to come back in 2020. But look at prior to 2020, right, 78 nothing, et cetera. Last year, Michigan won, you know, Scott dropped 50 at them uh, in, you know, uh, Piscataway. So I've got this one, Michigan, 52 to 10. Then Nebraska, Michigan's got to go on the road to Nebraska. That's never an easy place to play. New head coach trying to get a big uh, early season September upset uh, uh, you know, of what will be a, probably a top two ranked Michigan team. I still have the Wolverines win this one, 42 to 17. Take a look at our Super Chat leaderboard. If you guys haven't watched our live shows, anyone who Super Chats gets added to this, we'll continue to get show love to the top 10. If it expands, Jack, we might have to show the start to the top 20. You never know because we're off to a hot start. John Blaze, Back Road Blue, our biggest contributors to the show. Matthew Spence, Charles Kennebrew, Jim Pinderbull at the $100 and up. Javier Gregson, Mike K, who I know is watching right now. Cody Mountford with $30. Robert Davis, $20. And then seven others tied at $20. Our Super Chat leaderboard, two shows, two live shows goes into the 2023 season. Let's take a look at the month of October. A little sparse, right? Because you don't get a game until the 7th, 14th, 21st. Then you've got a bye. So only four Saturdays in the month has five in September. And then Michigan has their bye in the month of October. At Minnesota, I think this could be Michigan's second or third toughest game of the year. I've got Michigan winning a close one against a good Wisconsin or Minnesota team that went 9-4 and last year. I've got Michigan winning this one 31-24. Jim Harbaugh, has had a couple close calls there on the road uh, against Minnesota throughout his coaching and, and really even playing career. So I've got that one, Michigan 31-24. Next week, home against Indiana. Michigan whacks the fourth Indiana. Harbaugh certainly wants some more revenge from that 2020 loss, breaking their 33-year 33 33 winning streak against uh, the Hoosiers. I've got Michigan win. They went 60 Six to ten. That's at Michigan State the following week. Give me Michigan 41-20. to Um... Harbaugh's done pretty good on the road at uh, uh, East Lansing outside of the debacle of the last 22 minutes against uh, the Spartans when Michigan blew a 16-point lead in 2021. I've got Michigan winning that one 41-20, but that could be one as things kind of you know inched more towards the season, get a little more read on Michigan State. That could be a closer score than originally predicted, but let me know what you guys think on this one. Michigan, Michigan State. Um, third Saturday in October this year. Give me a score prediction for what you think that score will be. And, of course, put an M or an MSU next to it. Let me know who you guys think are going to be the winner. See my guy Josh Sherwood in the live chat. Let's go, Blue Bosa. Appreciate all you guys. For everyone watching live, light up the comments with these questions here. Uh, Michigan Michigan State, predict the score. Mine, 41-20 to 20 Michigan. I want to know what you guys think uh, in the live chat and, of course, down in the comments. Things get a little heavier in the month of November. You've got uh, two away, two road games back-to-back, -back, and you've got maybe three of Michigan's top five or so toughest games of the season. Purdue, the Big Ten West champs last year, uh, they're going to come to the big house. Then you've got to go at Penn State. Right? This is the Penn State team that's going to be ranked in the top six or seven, maybe even the top five to start the season. At Maryland, and we're going to talk about that one in a second. Jack said, that's a crazy score prediction for you right there. But you'll see why here in a few moments. And then it's Ohio State followed by the Big Ten Championship game. Let's run through my scores here. I've got this one shaking out kind of like the Big Ten Championship game was. Michigan might be close with Purdue early. Their power, their strength along the offensive defensive line will wear Purdue out in the second half. Uh, probably be a one-score game at halftime. And then I've got Michigan pulling away, winning this one 38-17 at home against Purdue. Next week at Penn State. I'm not going to give a score prediction yet because I don't know what we have out of Drew Aller, who was the top one or two, sometimes people three, uh, five-star quarterback in the 2022 class. He's going into his second year in the program. The seven or eight years of Sean Clifford is finally over. And Drew Aller is going to go in there and pair with two guys who were freshman star running backs last year, the top two running backs. Skill position players that were underclassmen last year that now have another year of maturity and a solid defense for Penn State. Guys, if James Franklin is any sort of coach, if he has any coaching talent, which he clearly has, he's won a Big Ten, he's beat Michigan a couple few times, he's beat Ohio State one says coach. He's kept Ohio State close a bunch. He clearly has talent. He's won a couple big bowl games there uh, in his, what, eight or so seasons, nine seasons at Penn State. If he can't have a back-to-back -back run this coming two years, I'm not saying that he has to make a college playoff and win the Big Ten, but I'm talking about 
11 and 12 win seasons, kind of like Michigan just did the last two and going to a third year. If he can't take what they did last year, 11 and 2 last year, uh, won a big time bowl game, only two losses were to Michigan and to Ohio State. If he can't continue that going for the next two seasons, I'm kind of questioning his coaching ability because they have sophomores, freshmen, juniors. They are a young team, young quarterback, talented team. The only two teams on their schedule they should have a problem with is Michigan and Ohio State again. So I'm looking to see Penn State. They could have a big-time season. I'm putting that one as this for the uh, score prediction. I'm not going to make a prediction until I really know what Penn State has. I might make, make my final prediction until we get towards the end of August. But let me know what you guys think on that one. Do you think Michigan can go into Happy Valley and beat Penn State? Remember back to 2021. They need a, you know, a Cade McNamara dragging past Eric Gall, who broke a tackle and went all the way 40 yards to the house to win that game with uh, you know two or so minutes left in the ball game. Next week, they go on the road to Maryland. I've got Michigan win this one 84 to nothing against a Maryland team that went 8-5 last year, almost beat Ohio State, you know, dropped 50 or so on Ohio State in the, uh, the final game of the year before Ohio State-Michigan. Now, why is that? Why is 84 nothing? Well, I don't know if you guys knew this, and we didn't talk about it a ton, but guess who Maryland's new offensive coordinator is? One Josh Gaddis, right? Absolute disaster at Miami to the levels that you can't even comprehend how bad their offense was last year. Just go look at Miami's team last year. Look at the yards. Look at the third down conversions. Look at the stats. Look at the scores they put up. Look how many quarters they went scoreless last year. I think he's going to turn a uh, Maryland team that's got a ton of skill position players. Their wide receiver group is amazing. They've got a quarterback that's uh, to his brother. He's coming back. I'm pretty sure what I saw. Yeah, he's coming back. Um, they should be a, a hell of a talented offense, but they got Josh Gass. He's able to take an awesome offense and turn them into dog shit in just like that. Michigan's going to win this one revenge game. Harbaugh's going to take it out. Uh, going to pour one out for Xavier Worthy's mom. Beat Maryland, Josh Gaddis, and Mike Loxley. 84 to nothing uh, on the road in Maryland. All right. How about the Ohio State game? Next week, I think it's going to be more of the same. Uh, I think Ohio State has as much talent, if not more. They've got more tie-in talent than Michigan. They've got questions at quarterback, but they've got two five-star quarterbacks on the roster in Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. Unproven, but every quarterback that's played for Ryan Day has eventually turned into a star within a matter of games. I still think Michigan's got the mental edge in Ohio State, the fact that it's going to be in Michigan. This should be, just like 2021, one of the most ruckus environments we will see uh, in a college football stadium you know, this entire year. Right? It'll be uh, up there, and if these two teams are you know, 11-0, 10-1 and both again like they've been the last two years, just I can't even comprehend how electric that uh, environment's going to be. I think Michigan bumps it up a little on offense. Ohio State steps up their game, too. They only scored 23. Total losers. Have no offense. You know, whatever. 48-28 uh, is my score prediction. Ohio State Michigan. Then it's the Big Ten Championship game. Wouldn't it be something if it was Michigan versus Iowa? Cade McNamara, Eric All in that game. Whoever it is, I'm just going to guess, right? It Wisconsin, Iowa, Purdue. Michigan's going to win that one. Just like the last two years. They're going to have no problem, uh, especially when you get in the second half. They jumped on Iowa early. They jumped on Purdue late. Anyway, either way, it was a uh, you know, 3-4 score victory. 41-14 is my Big Ten championship prediction. So my record for this season, I went all the way to the Big Ten championship game. I'm not going to ask you guys to. We got Shane Johnson with the Super Chat. Shane, we'll get to you in a moment. Appreciate that. 12 wins, one toss-up is my prediction. I'll make a final score prediction before uh, the season starts, probably in August. But I got to know what we're getting out of Drew Aller, what we're getting out of the Penn State defense in 2023. But I ask you guys, don't count the Big Ten championship game. Just give me a record for the 12 games on the schedule. Let me know what you guys are thinking. 12 games that are currently on the schedule, uh, not the Big Ten Championship game. What will Michigan's 2023 regular season record be? Could they go 12-0 uh, for a second straight season? That hasn't happened probably, what, since you know, the 40s, 30s? I'll have to go back and look. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Michigan's 12-game regular season record.